These are the results of my brand new Facebook Marketplace dropshipping business that I started last week. And I know what you're thinking. It might not be a Lambo money or maybe even a Tesla money that all the other Shopify dropshippers are, you know, always making video about. But I think it's still pretty good considering that this is only one week that I didn't have to spend any money on advertisement and I didn't have to store any inventory. And I can also open more shops like this, not just the one or two, but let's say 10 and I can scale this up. Ladies and gentlemen, in this video, I want to show you how I started my brand new Facebook marketplace dropshipping business from scratch. This is almost like a free course free tutorial step by step how to do it you can follow my steps and start your facebook marketplace dropshipping journey with me in this video we're going to cover two major ways of dropshipping on facebook marketplace okay because there are two one is by dropshipping on a regular facebook marketplace and another one is by dropshipping on facebook shops I'm gonna talk about them, so don't worry if you're not familiar with the terms. And also, if you wanna skip certain parts, you're gonna have timestamps down below. So if you know something already, you can skip that part and go to the next one. Also, quick disclaimer. In this video, you're gonna learn pretty much everything you need to start Facebook dropshipping. You will see the process from A to Z. There are still some secrets that I don't share here. However, you can go visit dropshippingguild.com, which is my website that I created, and join the guild. Well, the dropshipping guild is a place where you can learn everything about Facebook dropshipping from A to Z and you're gonna see all the secrets such as how to get tax exam and don't pay sales tax on your supplier websites, inside hacks into Facebook shop and Facebook marketplace, but also you will see a private community on our Discord. We have over 140 members. It's a very tight community with like-minded people that are serious about this and we have weekly meetings with me and other dropshippers we sometimes also have guests that are in this industry and we talk about this stuff all the time. But again, this video is gonna show you pretty much all the basics, but if you wanna level up, I suggest checking out the Dropshipping Guild. And if you decide to join and use the coupon code Facebook30, you're gonna get the 30% off. This coupon code is only available to people that watch this video. I don't really promote it on other videos. So this is a special gift from me to you if you decide to join us. All right, let's get to it. Let's start with the very basics. What is Facebook dropshipping? Specifically, retail dropshipping on Facebook Marketplace and Facebook shops. I'm sure you know what Facebook is. It's a social media, the biggest one probably, and also one of the oldest ones. But they also have this thing called Facebook Marketplace, where people advertise their listings and the things they wanna sell. For the past few years, Facebook Marketplace also opened an option with the shipping option, meaning you can ship products to your customers that buy things on Facebook Marketplace from you. And since Facebook is the biggest social media in the world, there's a lot of people on this platform already that are ready to buy products. And this is where we step in. By we, I mean retail dropshippers. I'm sure you're familiar with Amazon, Walmart, Home Depot, you heard about these companies, right? So you can use Amazon or Walmart or eBay or Home Depot as your supplier and sell their products on Facebook Marketplace. How? Well, you just copy the images from let's say Amazon, you copy the title, you copy the description, and then you go on Facebook Marketplace and list it as your product. No one has to know that it's not actually your product. It looks like it is yours because you posted your pictures and the title and the description. It's pretty much the same one as on Amazon, for example, but you did it on Facebook and you put a higher price than it costs on Amazon. Let's say on Amazon it costs $80, you're selling on Facebook for 100. So when someone buys this on Facebook Marketplace, your profit is $20. How did I get the 20? 100 minus 80, equals 20. So that's your profit. You're basically a middleman between these transactions. And when someone orders this product from you, you just go on your Amazon account, order their product from Amazon and send it to your customer directly. You don't have to handle any inventory. You're just a middleman and you can do this from anywhere. And this is what I've been doing for the past three years. It's pretty cool. Another cool thing about this process is that Facebook Marketplace has very, very low fees compared to like eBay, for example. Facebook Marketplace has only 5% fees. And if you decide to use Facebook shops, your fees are gonna be 0% until 2020, which means it's just pure profit. It's a printing machine, okay? Well, at least until the end of 2022. And speaking of Facebook shops, I briefly talk about Facebook Marketplace dropshipping, but there's also a thing called Facebook shops. So Facebook Marketplace dropshipping is when you use your personal account with your face and everything to list products on Facebook Marketplace. 
Facebook shops is when you use Facebook pages that you convert into Facebook shops to drop ship on Facebook marketplace. You can either list your products as you, as a person, or as a page if you want to hide yourself or maybe create a brand. Let's say you want to specialize in dropshipping products around home decor and you build your little boutique page on Facebook to dropship these type of products. You can do that if you want. Facebook shops have a little bit more automation available as well. You can also connect Instagram or Shopify page to it. But more about Facebook shops later in this video. All right, these were the basics basics. Now, before I move on to actually specific stuff, there's also one quick misconception that I want to debunk right now. Actually, maybe two. The first one, is that what about the Amazon box or the Walmart box? If you order a product directly from Amazon, you send it to your customer, they're gonna receive the product in the Amazon box. Are they gonna be mad? Are they gonna you know, message you that you purchased this product from Amazon? Well, from thousands of orders that I fulfill across these multiple years that I've been doing this, maybe 1% of orders and customers actually reach out to me and even ask about the box. They even were, were not mad or angry. They were just asking, hey, why did it come in an Amazon box? Usually what I say is that I use Amazon as a fulfillment center. Or I just say, I use Amazon boxes to ship my products because you can buy Amazon boxes and use them as a shipment. It's, it's nothing bad. And you can use Amazon as a fulfillment center. A lot of people are doing it to send products out. That's also something that people are doing. Same with Walmart or Home Depot. 99% of my orders never ask about the box. They were just happy they got it. And the second misconception that's very popular among people that are starting this business is that what about the receipt? Most orders on Amazon or Walmart or Home Depot or whatever don't include receipts in their boxes. Most of them don't have it. If you don't believe me, check out this clip where I actually order something from Home Depot, which is one of my suppliers, to check out if there is a receipt inside the box. So this is the product. It's like a drill uh, and a toolbox, okay? So uh, that's, 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 the, that's the tool, right? As you can see, no price tag, no receipt, nothing, right? There's, there's nothing here. And then um, here's the box. So let me take out all of this trash, okay? Boom, boom, and nothing. All right, so now you can see there's no receipt and most orders come like this. Do not use gift receipt option because if you use a gift receipt option, you're sending a gift receipt. So there's a receipt that your customer can use to return the product directly to Home Depot. So don't use gift receipt, just send it as it is. You're gonna be fine. And I'm telling you, most of the people don't care. If you don't believe me, ask other people in my free Facebook group that you can join and they will confirm to you that nobody cares about the receipt or boxes. Your customers will not ask about it and it will not be sent out. So with that out of the way, let's continue. All right, so the first thing you will have to decide on is which supplier you wanna use. As I mentioned earlier, there are four main ones that most of the people are using, including me. I use these suppliers most of the time. That's gonna be Amazon, Walmart, Home Depot, and eBay. And from four of those, I would say that the best one for me is eBay and walmart.com. Some of you are my thinking, why not Amazon? The thing with Amazon is that Amazon is using TBA tracking numbers. They have their own system to ship products. And sometimes this can be a problem to when you want to upload the tracking number to your orders. There is a way to do it. And a lot of people are using Amazon, but I just rather stay on the safe side that's why I stick to walmart.com and ebay.com because they have a lot of unique products. They have a quick shipping policy and these suppliers work the best for me over the last three years. Okay, so let's start with the regular Facebook Marketplace dropshipping. I'm gonna show you how I open my new Facebook Marketplace account, a new profile that I use to sell my Facebook Marketplace. So the thing with Facebook Marketplace is that Anyone can sell it on the marketplace and it's available in most countries. However, the shipping option at the moment is only available to certain accounts and in certain countries. I live in US and the shipping option is definitely available in the US. It's also available in United Kingdoms, but it might be restricted in your country. If you want to learn more which countries have the shipping option available, check out the link down below. It will take you to Facebook marketplace policy. So as I mentioned earlier, not every account will have a shipping option unlocked. How do you unlock it? There are a few ways, but what I did is that I make 
sure that my Facebook profile looks legit. I added some pictures, some information about this account. I also added some friends so it looks like I am a trustworthy person. And then I was selling products locally, things around my house and people will come pick it up and give me cash or sometimes Venmo or Cash App. And after a certain time, if you have these conversation on Facebook Marketplace with people that wanna pick it up, Facebook will notice that you are serious about selling on Facebook Marketplace and they will unlock the shipping option for you. But there's also a trick. If you don't wanna sell products or maybe you don't have any products to sell around your house, what you can do, you can just fake that you have some products. Just download any pictures from internet with a, I don't know, product that you wanna sell. Let's say a hammer or a chair and have your family and friends message you on Facebook Marketplace saying, hey, is this product available? And you can fake these transactions saying, hey, yes, it is. And then they're gonna be like, hey, when can I come pick it up? And you're gonna say, I don't know, in an hour or so. You're faking the transaction, you mark it out sold, you mark it to the person that messaged you, which is, might be your family or friend. And if you have enough of these conversations, Facebook will eventually give you a shipping option unlocked. That's like a secret sauce. I have more of these. If you join our dropshipping guild, you'll find the link to it down below. But let's continue with our video. All right, so at this point, I have my Facebook profile open with the shipping option. I picked my supplier. Now I had to find products that I wanna sell. The more products I have, the more money I can possibly make. But how do you find these products that actually sell, these winning products that actually sell? Well, let me show you. Okay, so as you can see, I'm logged into my new Facebook Marketplace account, and I'm gonna show you how to find products. There are a few ways to do it. Some are free methods, some are paid methods, okay? Obviously the paid methods comes with certain benefits, but in this particular course, I'm gonna show you a free ways because I still use free ways as well. Don't get me wrong, I love the softwares, especially Zig Analytics, that allows me to find winning products, but a lot of times you don't need software to find winning products. Software is just like a tool that allows you to find products more easily. But if you're brand new, you're starting out, I'm gonna show you how to do it for free effectively, okay? So let's start with the most basic search method, okay? So to find a product, uh, one of the ways, the free ways that you can use, the easiest one, is by simply going to your supplier website. So let's say, in my case, it's gonna be Walmart. I'm on walmart.com. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna look for products they have the best seller category, best seller um, title, okay? That, that's something that Walmart does and also Amazon and all the other suppliers do it as well. Now, since it's September, it's almost October actually right now, I'm gonna go with Halloween items and even Walmart is telling me, hey, check these products out. And as you can see, most of them are Halloween related products because seasonal products on Facebook Marketplace and other marketplaces sell very well because that's what people are looking for right now. And you know, maybe there's someone looking for a pumpkin decoration for the house because it's fall, because it's Halloween, etc. People are looking for these products right now. So I'm gonna go with that instinct that, you know, since I know people are looking for this, I'm gonna sell this. I actually have a calendar with products that you can sell at specific time of the year. The calendar is also available on the Dropshipping Guild. I know uh, I've been plugging this a lot, but trust me, I have a lot of resources in the Guild. And you know, remember, 30% off if you use the coupon Facebook30. All right, let's continue. So um, yeah, let's say, uh, let's, let's check out the decorations they have, okay? Indoor decorations. So these are the Walmart's decorations. And what I'm gonna try to find is the product that has either the most reviews or maybe the best seller uh, title, some of them have it. I can actually click on sort by and click on best seller and Walmart will tell me which product is their best selling products. So since these are probably new products, new items that Walmart is releasing, they don't have a lot of reviews. But from what we see is that these four products are selling the best because Walmart has sorted them out for me for the most popular products. This school seems to be selling a lot, as well as these little pens. And these pens actually have 11 um, reviews, which means that, you know, um, like these ones have only four, this one has nothing. So these ones have 11, that means that there's already some people that buy it and they like it. So it's not actually a lot of reviews because some of the products on Walmart has like hundreds or thousands of reviews. 
but let's just go with it because it's a new product and it might sell. The, the best selling uh, title and the reviews are good indicators that this might sell, okay? So right here, I see that this product is sold and shipped by Walmart. That's pretty cool. And it can arrive to, um, you know, my customer within the next few days, with the next six days. That's great. That means that I will get the tracking number probably within the three days, which I can upload to Facebook Marketplace because usually that's how it is. Usually Walmart has a policy that the products have to be shipped within three days. The same as Facebook. Facebook has the same policy. So this works great. Um, let's look at the picture. So we got some, you know, pictures right here. It's cool, cool. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to check if this product is already being sold on Facebook Marketplace. There are other dropshippers trying to sell as well. So I'm going to copy the title right here and go back to my Facebook account, go to Marketplace, and in the search bar, I'm going to paste the, the title and let's see if there's someone already selling this product. As you can see, there are people already selling these products. There's actually a lot of people trying to sell this product, okay? So this product costs $9.98 on uh, Walmart and people are selling it for $13.27. Let's actually clean on, click on one of these listings, okay? So this person is selling it for $13.27 and it costs $9.98 on Walmart. However, since we are not using a Walmart Plus program, which means that they offer free shipping, uh, we will have to pay $6 in shipping for this because products on Walmart below $35, you have to pay shipping option. You have to pay for shipping, which is $6. So that means that this person is not making a lot of money. That's what I'm trying to say. So let's see another one. Maybe this is not as good product as I thought. This person, on the other hand, might make some money out of this product. Why? Because it's charging $13.27, but they also are charging for shipping, which is $11.99, which is a pretty good profit margin. But we are not sure if this person is actually selling products. And this is why this method is kind of mission mash, okay? Sometimes it might work, sometimes you might find something, sometimes it might not. I will show you a better free way of finding products that actually sells. Okay, so the way that actually do very well and it's very effective is called a blue stack method, okay? So Facebook Marketplace will look differently on uh, your desktop and on your mobile version of your phone. So if I go on my phone, for example, and I go to Facebook Marketplace, I'm going to see more information. So I just clicked on a random listing on my phone, okay? And I'm not sure if you can see. I hope you do. But there is a section right here that says sold by nine, sorry, saved by nine shoppers. That means that there are nine people already interested in purchasing this product. And Facebook is telling me this right here uh, in, in this section. Oh, here we go, nine other shoppers. That means that's a good indication for me that this product is a good product to sell because there are people that, you know, are selling this. But it's kind of hard to use your phone and, you know, do this product research on your own. So what I do is I use a emulator that emulates mobile version of Facebook Marketplace on my computer. And I use this program called BlueStack that allows me to do it. So I'm just going to download this program really quick. Okay, I'm going to go with BlueStack 10 and I'm going to install it on my computer. And once I install this program, I open it up and this is what it looks like. It basically looks like Android version of Android phones on my computer. So your BlueStack, you will have to download the Facebook app on your computer on, I mean, on this emulator because this emulator is basically an Android, but on your computer and it's acting up like this is a brand new phone now. So if you have a brand new phone, you have to install the apps you want and the app I want is Facebook. So you're going to go to Play Store. You're going to type in Facebook and you're going to install the app. I already have it on my phone, so uh, it just says update, but you're going to click install and you're going to install it on this emulator. And once you have it, 
go back, open the app, and this is my Facebook Marketplace. I'm gonna go to the Facebook Marketplace section right here, and I can browse my Facebook Marketplace on my on my computer. But it looks like it's sold. Uh, but it looks like it's being used as an app. I know it's like an inception here, but the main point is BlueStack is a free program. Download it, install Facebook on it, and you'll be able to see more information. For example, I open this listing right here, and I can see that it's saved by nine other shoppers. Three have sold in the last 24 hours. So that means that this is a really good product that I could possibly drop ship myself. And what I can do, I can do reverse engineering, reverse search, and try to find this product myself. It's actually a pretty funny listing, but it's a it's actually a print so it's it's probably like a t-shirt or something you don't want to sell clothes on facebook marketplace sorry you don't want to drop ship clothes as a as a drop shipper because clothes are you know people want to return them maybe it's the wrong size etc i'm not gonna play with this let's actually find something that i can drop ship myself and it's probably available on walmart so here's a secret that a lot of new dropshippers are doing and i also done it myself and i actually do it still so walmart owns a bunch of brands and one of their home decor brands is called mainstay okay and a lot of new beginners start to dropshipping mainstay because it's very easy to find these products and sell them yourself and by the way walmart has tons of home decor and home decor is a really good category in facebook marketplace so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna just open it up the the search bar and type in mainstay okay and as you can see i already have a bunch of listings open let's try to find one that has a lot of recently sold or maybe safes that way i can find myself that way i can know that this product is good to sell and i will try to find it myself on fit on walmart okay so after doing some product research i was able to find this product right here as you can see this is something that's sold Meaning if it's sold, it means that it has a past history of being sold. There's a proof for me that someone is buying these type of products and maybe I can find this product myself. And I know it's a Walmart product is be because it says mainstay and this is the Walmart brand. So we're going to check if this product is available on walmart.com. And by the way, this person is also a dropshipper because it's also a member of dropshipping community so i know this guy probably has small products like this and he's dropshipping them himself so let's see if we can find this product on walmart.com and if we can list them ourselves so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna copy this title right here and open my browser on my computer down in the blue stack but actually on my computer and type in this title in walmart search bar so i'm back on walmart.com and as you can see i found the dresser it's this one right here it costs 89 dollars on walmart.com and here on facebook marketplace it costs 129 so that's a pretty good markup this person is making uh 40 30 dollars so you just sell one of these and you are basically making 40 30 dollars and remember with facebook marketplace it's a number game the more listings you have the more money you can make so you can list i don't know 10 products like this and make 300 400 dollars every time you make a sale all right so we found our product we're gonna list it but before we do that i just want to mention again that there are softwares that they can kind of help you with that if you want to learn more about using a software that kind of can speed up this process of finding products check out the video right here that talks about a program that will allow you to find these products more efficiently and faster okay so what i need to do now is i need to download the pictures copy the title modify it a little bit and copy the description down below so to take the pictures i'm gonna click on the picture individually and a lot of people just do right click save image as and they save them on computer i don't do that why because when you do that there's a meta data attached to this picture that will say this picture is coming from walmart and you know some people say that it doesn't matter some people say it does here's the thing i never do right click and save images and i never had any issues with you know my dropshipping accounts i mean i do have some but they're not majors but i know people that don't follow what i do and they do get in trouble 
I'm not saying that, you know, my method is good or wrong, but I'm just saying that I never had major issues with dropshipping. And I know some other people that did. So if you want to be like me, what you would do, you instead of saving an image on your computer, you're going to take a screenshot. So I have this program called Nightshot that allows me to do it. This is the app. This is what it looks like. You download on your computer you, and you set up the key. So for me, it's, for example, F6. When I click F6, I'm able to take a screenshot. So I'm going to do a screenshot like this. Pick the area I want to take a screenshot of and save it on my desktop. Actually, let's fix this so I don't have this wide background right here and save it. And I'm going to do this with most of the pictures. I'm not going to take all of this. I want to be seen as it's me selling it. Patrick is selling this on Facebook Marketplace. That's what you want to aim for. When you try to sell on Facebook Marketplace, you want to look like a person that is selling it from your house or maybe a small magazine or a small warehouse that you have. Okay, That's the vibe we are aiming for. We are not aiming for professionalism. At least not as not, not on these marketplaces because these marketplaces are designed for people that are selling things around their house and you want to look like a person that is selling things around your house all right but we first we're going to take a screenshot of this and this one is also very useful because it shows you specifications you know how tall the inches etc very useful stuff your customer will look for things like that this is also a good picture because it tells you more specifications. This is the picture that shows you what this product looks like from the back. And I think I have enough pictures. Now, let's go to back to Facebook and try to list on my account. So I'm back on Facebook Marketplace. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna click on Create Listing right here. I'm gonna go with the single listing and I'm gonna go to Item for Sale. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some photos. So I'm gonna add the photos that I just uh, took a screenshot off. The pictures are uploading. And the most important picture is the first picture, okay? Because that's the picture that people are going to see on Facebook Marketplace. What I usually do is I pick images like this. This is actually a good image, meaning it's a lifestyle image. It shows the product being used in real life. There are pictures that, you know, have white background, like this one, for example. But what I found across you know many years i've been doing this is that the white background images don't do so well on platforms like facebook marketplace these however works better because they show product being used in real life and i just have more luck with products like this sorry with pictures like this now regarding the title we're not going to use the word mainstay okay we're not gonna we're gonna not gonna use this we're going to copy this, okay, classic five drawer dresser, gray, and paste it right here. But we're not going to put the name of the brand because when you do it, you're findable. Other dropshippers might find you. It also tells you that you are my getting this product from Walmart. And besides, nobody really knows what mainstream is. Maybe there's some people that do, especially the dropshippers, but most of the people don't know, don't care. And what they are just looking for is the drawer. And this is what they are getting. It's a great drawer with five shelves. That's what they want. And that's what interests them. And that's what you should do with the titles. Just keep to the specifics. Don't need to add all the garbage. Keep it short. Facebook actually tells you to keep it around 65 characters. And use the main phrases such as classic drawer dresser. Great. That's exactly what people are looking for. And that's what we're gonna keep. Maybe actually let's move gray to the front and remove it like this. Boom. That's my title for the price. You want to price it enough so you will make money. There's more, more, in, there's more science into pricing and I go over pricing very in depth on the dropshipping guild. But what you need to understand is that Facebook is charging 5% fee, okay? So when you sell this product, 5% of your sales price is gonna go to Facebook. So just to break even, you have to add this app. So if this product costs $89, you need to remember that you will have to add 
you know, 5% on top of that, 5% from the selling price. So it's not even be this price is going to be, you know, whatever selling here. So 5%, it's probably going to be, oh my God, I'm going to be really bad, but let's say around $5. Okay. So you have to at least charge five more dollars. There's also a sales tax that you will have to pay in Walmart. So when you're going to buy this product, you will have to pay sales tax on this product. Now, as a dropshipper, you can get the sales tax exemption and you don't have to pay sales tax on your supplier website, but there's, you know, it's, it's, it's a process and it's a long process. And again, I go in depth how to get sales tax exam in the dropshipping guild. And I show you step by step how I got my sales tax exemptions. And trust me, it's, it's a lot of money. It gives you tons of profits because if this costs $89 and I ship this product, let's say to California, I'll have to pay like nine, 10% sales tax. So in this case, it will going to be eight, nine dollars, which means I'm losing eight, nine dollars on this product, or I can make this eight, nine dollars if I'm tax exam and I don't have to pay sales tax exemption. Because the thing with the tax exemption is that the law says that the last person purchasing product has to pay the sales tax. Everyone in the middle, which it's you in this case, you're a reseller. You don't have to pay sales tax. Your customer has to pay sales tax. And Facebook is charging your customer sales tax automatically. You don't have to collect it. They do it for you. You just have to ship the product, which is really cool. So long story short, what you should do is you should charge 30 to 25% of that price. So in our case, is this cost $90? 10% of 90 is what? $9. So three times nine is twenty-seven dollars. So you should so you should charge hundred sixteen dollars for this dresser, give it or take. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna type in one sixteen as a category. We're gonna go with dresser. Facebook's actually giving you suggestion categories. They they have a dresser, so we're gonna go with that condition new because it's a brand new product. For the description, we're gonna go back to the Walmart website, and we're not gonna copy all of it okay as you can see this is the whole description it's a lot of stuff blah 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 nobody really cares what people do care about is the specifications and Walmart is giving us the specifications which are right here so we're going to copy that and paste it right here okay what i'm going to do now is i'm going to separate this like this so this is more readable and easier to understand for our customers voila this is what the preview of what it's going to look like for our customers, okay? All right, for the quantity, I usually go with five. And if I, I'm getting close to one, I just go back, edit the listing and add more. I don't wanna deal with variants. I never sell products that are variants. I suggest you do the same. Number of drawers, I'm gonna go with five. Color, gray. Finish, I'm gonna leave it. Decor style, I'm gonna leave it. But in general, the more information you put, it's better. Facebook likes more descriptive listings. There is a thing about uh, hiding these listings from, from your friends. So if you don't want your friends to see that you're selling this, because Facebook might send this notification to your friends, you can click on hide from friends or leave it as it is. I don't really care if they see it. So I'm gonna go with the next. Okay, so now the most important thing is that it's gonna ask you for delivery method. So you for sure wanna mark that you are a shipping option, okay? So it means that this product is only available to people that want them to get delivered to their, to their, uh, to their house. Ship, you're going to ship it. Okay. If you go with local pickup only, that means that only people lo lo locally, they will have to come and pick it up. That's not, that's not drop shipping. We want to ship it. Okay. So we'll go with shipping only or go with shipping and local pickup only. But if people ask you if this is available for pickup, say, hey, I only ship this product. Sometimes it's good to go with the local and shipping uh, together because Facebook kind of pushed the local listings to locals. So you can get initial you know, boost in views if you do that. But for our example, I'm just gonna go with shipping only. And I'm gonna go with next. I'm gonna go with next. Facebook is asking me if I wanna post to some local uh, groups if I want to in my area. So as you can see, there are some groups I can list this to. Sometimes it's cool to do it, but I'm not going to do it. And I'm going to go with publish and voila, you just listed your first product. Congratulations. Now what you have to do is just wait for sales and track everything you do.
Okay, perfect. So I showed you how I'm finding products and how do I list them on my Facebook marketplace. But here are a few things. There's a way to kind of automate this process of listing products because taking screenshots and copying and pasting all of this stuff can get tedious after, you know, 100 listings that you do. So what I do is I use an automation software called AutoDS to kind of help me with listing structure. What AutoDS does is basically copying and pasting listings very fast and upload them to Facebook Marketplace really fast. They're also capable of tracking my orders and any price changes on my supplier website. So I really like them and I've been using them for a while. If you want to use AutoDS, check out the link down below. I believe you should also get the, a monthly trial as well as some discount on their software and using AutoDS, it's a whole another video, which I'm actually gonna do next. So my next video is gonna be how to use AutoDS and you will learn step-by-step step how to do it. But let's continue our adventures with Facebook Marketplace dropshipping without using any software. Your goal should to list more. The more listings you have, the likelihood of you getting more sales is increased because there's more people looking on your listings and you can get more sales and more money. So what you want to do is you want to set up a goal. Let's say 10 listings a day, list 10 products every day. I'm saying 10 listings a day because that's, you know, a good number to get started, to get you motivated. Don't go too fast either because if you're going to add too many listings at the same time, Facebook might not like that. So start with 10 listings a day for the first month see how it goes so you learn the process. The thing is, is that you need to keep track of all your listings. And what I do is I have a spreadsheet. I use Google Spreadsheet to track all my listings. I put the link to my supplier website. I put the link to my Facebook Marketplace listing. I put the supplier price. I put the price I'm selling it for. And that way I can track everything in one place. Super useful stuff. If you are a member of my guild, you will get my template for the spreadsheet that I use, but you can also create a template yourself for free. And let me tell you what you need. Again, you need a link to your supplier website for your listing. You need a link to your Facebook listing so it's easy to track. You need a price on your supplier and price that you're selling on Facebook Marketplace. You can add some other tabs as well, such as title or maybe the quantity available, or you can use software like AutoDS to do this for you. All right, but what about if you get a sale? What do you have to do? When you get a sale, you have to go to your supplier website and order the product. But instead of using your information, you're gonna put the information of your customer. So go to your seller dashboard on Facebook Marketplace, look up the order, and see the name and the address of your customer. Then put this information on your supplier website for the order that you're trying to do and your supplier will send this directly to your customer. That's it. Once the product is ordered, wait for your supplier to provide a tracking number that you're gonna copy and then you're gonna go back to Facebook Marketplace, click on Mark as shipped and Facebook will ask you for the tracking number and you're gonna upload it, the tracking number you got from your supplier and now you're officially done. Just wait for the money to come from Facebook and for the product to be delivered to a customer. Okay, so, so far we covered a lot about Facebook Marketplace dropshipping using regular Facebook Marketplace account. By this point, you should understand how to do it. Now let's talk about Facebook shops, what the Facebook shops are, what are the benefits? What's the difference between Facebook shops and regular Facebook marketplace? So Facebook shops are basically Facebook pages that you can use to list product, just like you use your personal account, your personal Facebook account on Facebook marketplace. So let's say you have a page on Facebook dedicated to home improvement or something like that. And you want to sell products on this page and you can do that. Facebook will allow you to do that. The cool thing about Facebook shops is that right now, most of the products that you sell in Facebook shops have 0% fees. So remember that 5% fee that Facebook marketplace is charging you? Well, that's not the case with Facebook shops. Until the end of 2022, there are no fees for most of the products, which is really cool, which means more profits for you. Another benefit of Facebook shops is there's way more automation to it. You can kind of automate it to the point where all you have to do is just respond to messages if you use programs like AutoDS, for example, which is really cool. It can automatically reprice your products, change the quantity automatically. Everything is very synced up, works great. You can also outsource traffic from Facebook shops, not just to Facebook Marketplace, but also to Instagram shops, which is 
just another way of dropshipping. You can dropship on Instagram and it's free traffic from Instagram shops as well as Google Shops, Shopify. It's a whole nother level of dropshipping. It's just way more stuff that you can do with regular marketplace, okay? Now everything sounds amazing, but again, Facebook shops are only available in certain countries, for sure US, for sure United Kingdoms, but they might not be available in your country yet. I'm sure in the future it will be, but at the moment, there's only certain amount of countries that have Facebook shops available. At least Facebook shops with Facebook Marketplace option, because there are Facebook shops that are available pretty much in every country in the world, but they don't have an option to sell on Facebook Marketplace. And that's the key difference between, let's say, US Facebook shops and a Facebook shop in Russia, which actually that's a bad example, but there's probably not Facebook in Russia anymore since, you know, the war. But let's say in France, okay, in France, they don't have that option yet. Here in the United States or United Kingdom, you do have that option, which is great. And the process is kind of similar. You find products and list them on Facebook Marketplace, but instead of going through the tabs in your regular Facebook Marketplace profile, you go to your Facebook page and you list everything from there. Super easy stuff. So the first thing that you would need to do is to create a Facebook page and then convert it into a Facebook shop, which I'm gonna show it to you right now. It's very easy to create a new Facebook page. All you have to do is click on this menu button right here, click on pages, and right here you're gonna see a list of your pre-existing pages, but if you wanna click a new one, you're gonna click on create new page right here. Now you have to give a name to it. What I suggest is going with something that will kinda of resonate with what you're trying to sell, so maybe if you're trying to sell um, tools and stuff like that, maybe put in the name something like home improvements. If you're trying to sell home decor, maybe something with, you know, homey stuff or something like that. You know, you know, you know, you know what I mean? So I'm going to go with um, tool stuff. So I'm going to be called home. No, I want to name it your home improvement shop. Okay. Let's, let's, let's go with something like that, okay? Category, so for category, I usually go with what I'm trying to sell. So let's see what are the options. I'm gonna type in home improvement and we got that. So I'm gonna go with that description. What I would just do, I would briefly describe what I'm doing. So I'm gonna say something like, I'm a small business owner and I sell home decor, okay? Small business selling home improvement and decor online. That's the description I went with, okay? All right, let's click on create page. So now the next step would be adding the profile logo for this page as well as cover picture. So the thing with the profile picture is, is almost mandatory. The cover picture is not so much. However, if you do add cover image, it's gonna give you extra credibility in the eyes of Facebook and the eyes of uh, your customers. So I'm gonna start with the profile picture first, which is like a logo, okay? And then we're gonna go back to cover image. So to design the logo, I went to Canva. I'm sure some of you guys are familiar with Canva. Canva is a free tool that allows you to create graphic designs. It's very simple to use. All I did is I click on home and uh, I clicked on create design. Actually, I didn't click on create design. I went here and I typed in logo and I picked uh, the logo button right here. And then it gave me the list of different templates that I can use. And uh, I just went with the blank one. And then I typed in home furnishing logos and I click on that one. And once I have the logo, I can click on it. I can change the colors the way I want it. You see, now is the, the chair is blue, but um, I can double click and I change the, the, the name here. So your home, and then I'm gonna change this to improvement and voila, that's it. I have a logo designed in two minutes. Now I'm gonna download this logo really quick and upload it to my page. If you wanna use Canva, you will find the link to Canva down below. Again, it's a free tool. They have a premium program that you can pay for it. You get a little bit more, more uh, designs and stuff like that. But honestly, free version is, is good too. So 
uh, go back to Facebook and I'm going to click on add profile picture and upload the image that I just designed it. As you can see, now my logo is here. For the cover image, I suggest using a website called Unsplash where you can find free royal royalty free images, which means you can use them whatever way you want it. There are no, you know, copyrights on it or anything like that. And just upload something similar to the theme. So since we are going to sell furniture and home improvement stuff, I'm going to try to find a picture with this type of products like uh, furnishing products and stuff like that. So let me show you how to do it. So this is the website that I was talking about called Unsplash. Now I'm going to type in furniture and let's see what type of images I'm going to get. So right away we are getting a bunch of different pictures. Uh, I kind of like this one because it's uh, it shows you all the you know products that you can sell. So I'm going to click on it, click on download free and I have the uh, image saved up on my computer. Go back to Facebook, drag and drop it and let's see if it's going to upload it to my page and voila, here we go. So now I have all the basic information about my page ready to go. All right, once you have your Facebook page, the next thing that you need to do is you have to season it up. And what I mean by seasoning it up, you have to show Facebook that you this page is trustworthiness, meaning you have a certain amount of followers or maybe your page been around for a long time, few years, few months, you have some content on it. Basically show anything to Facebook, they will approve your shop to sell on Facebook Marketplace. Because here's the thing, there are two steps in allowing Facebook an option to sell for you on Facebook Marketplace as a Facebook page, okay? The first one is to approve your Facebook page to convert into Facebook shop, that's the first step. And another one is enabling Facebook Marketplace. The second one is kind of tricky, that's why, that's why you want to have a seasoned page because only seasoned pages get approved to have enabled Marketplace option on your Facebook page. This might sound a little bit complicated right now, but you will understand what I'm talking about once you start doing it yourself, once you start building this page and converting to the Facebook shop, go back to this video and watch this section again because you will understand what I'm talking about right now. To season my page, I run very, very, very cheap ads on Facebook to have people come and like my page and have certain amount of followers. There's a very easy trick to do that and let me show you how I did it. So as I mentioned earlier, there is a very simple trick to increase your amounts of followers with spending very little money, okay? Um, you can obviously buy followers from some shady websites and have some fake followers follow your page. But, you know, honestly, that way it's more expensive than this way and it's less legit because you get fake accounts following you. This method that I'm going to show you right here, it's, I mean, it's not free, but it's relatively cheap and you get actual real followers with very little amount of, with very little money spent, okay? So this is a page that I opened last week and so far I spent $14.80, okay? And this ad generated me 363 uh, page likes. So what I'm trying to achieve here is I'm trying to get 500 likes on my page. That's usually a safe number that Facebook likes and you usually they, they leave you alone and they think you are trustworthy in that trustworthy when you have 500 likes. So that's what I'm trying to aim for right now. I bet if I spend another $5, I'm going to get to this 500 page likes, which, you know, in total will be like, I'll spend $20 to get to this 500 likes. Okay. I know there are websites that you have to buy like $50 for 500 fake followers. So again, this method is cheaper than what usually people do. All right. So what I did here is something very simple. This is the ad, what it actually looked like. Okay. It's an ad. Uh, it's a meme about uh, Elon Musk. Okay. And I have no idea what it's saying because it's in Hindu. Okay. In Indian language. So I have no idea what it says, but it has Elon Musk on it, which is a meme Lord. Everyone knows Elon Musk, the richest man in the world. And you know, he, there are people that love him and hate him, but in general, he's just very well known. And that's what I was aiming for. Something that everyone knows in any language in the world. 
and they can be funny and memeable and this is very memeable character so that's what i was trying to use so what i did here i found this meme i literally just type in elon musk meme in indian uh we can do it right now here you go i type in elon musk meme in hindi and as you can see there's a bunch of them i can you know click on this one for example you know it's like a little story who's elon musk or maybe uh let's see maybe there's another one that's like a good one i'm just trying to find one that has something in hindi because i'm gonna advertise to people in india why i'm gonna advertise to people in india because running ads over there is super super cheap and that's what are you trying to aim for okay maybe this one bill gates after elon musk overtake you see i have no idea what it says here but i know snape i i think it's a funny meme i could da basically download this okay and that's what we're gonna do i'm gonna download this image and i'm gonna try to create an ad around it okay so to run ad on your facebook page that you just created go to your page and then scroll down where it says ad center and click on create ad right here once you do that go ahead and click on create new ad and what it says goal this is very important make sure to change it and pick get more page likes if you don't do that this is not gonna work make sure to pick this one now it's showing you the picture of the ad i'm gonna click on edit options and I'm gonna choose image and I'm gonna upload the image that I just downloaded from the internet. Perfect, so my picture is uploaded. Now I'm gonna change the description and put something in Hindi. So I went to Google Translator and I'm gonna type in something in English and then Google is gonna translate this for me in Hindi and I'm gonna copy this and paste it on the Facebook ad. So here we go, I type in Elon Musk is funny and I got the translation. I'm gonna go with the uh, English alphabet translation just because, I don't know, I just feel safer using that one than the actual letters that are Hindi letters. I'm just not sure what they mean, so I'm gonna go with this one, okay? I'm gonna go back, copy and paste it. So now the ad is gonna say that. Make sure that it says like button here. So whenever someone clicks on the like, they think they're liking the post. But in fact, they're actually liking our page. That's the secret that Facebook doesn't want to tell you. Next, scroll down to audiences. And what you want to do is you want to pick people that live in India, all ages. It doesn't matter. You don't have to go very specific here. Be very broad. Just make sure to pick India, interest. You don't really have to pick interest, but maybe type in Elon Musk since we are trying to target uh, you know, we're using his face. So I'm gonna click that, save audience. So we got location India, 18 to 65, interest Elon Musk, and that's pretty much it. We don't need anything else. You don't really have to know how to run ads. It doesn't really matter. It's, it's very cheap, it's dirty cheap, and you can keep it very broad. Now you have to pick your daily budget. So in this case, I set up $5 for three days. Maybe a better one would be $4 since remember I was running the other ad for $3 and I only got 380 followers. I feel like if I would run it for an extra one day, I would get to this 500 mark. So I'm gonna run it for fun, four, do, four days and for $5. The total thing will cost me 20 bucks. All I have to do now is just click promote and that's it. The ad is running. Just let Facebook do its thing. Once the ad is approved, just wait for the followers to come and you're good to go. All right, perfect. So your Facebook ad is running. Hopefully it's going to get you enough followers to get your shop approved. But let me just clarify something. This ad, even these followers that you're going to get, this is not going to guarantee that your shop is going to get approved on Enable. There's a little bit more nuances to it. And I go more in depth about what gets approved and what's not in the Dropshipping Guild. But this ad is probably the most important thing that gets people approved and enabled, okay? I feel like having followers is the most crucial part of it. Again, there's more to it, but this will most likely get approved most of your accounts. Again, it's kind of a mystery how this thing works. We have speculations and theories, and I have my own theory that usually, you know, works for me because I opened a bunch of these shops in, in, the, in the last three years, and 
I feel like I have a good understanding what works or not. And this thing seems to be the most crucial part. So once you have your likes and your page ready, what you need to do now is you need to convert it into Facebook shop. Maybe not even convert it. You just have to open a commerce account. Commerce account is like a backend of Facebook where you can manage the orders, list the products and stuff for your page, for your Facebook page. So without further ado, let me show you how to open a commerce account for your Facebook page and convert it into Facebook shop. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna click on here where it says manage shop, okay? Once you click on this, it's gonna open this menu where it will allow you to convert your page into the Facebook shop and have the commerce account uh, enabled. So I'm gonna click on start shop setup and we're gonna click on next. Here's a very important thing. If you don't pick the right option right here, you will never have the option to sell on Facebook Marketplace as a Facebook shop. So whatever you do right now, make sure that the option you're gonna pick is the checkout with Facebook, okay? This is the option you want to pick. If you pick a different option, let's say check out on another website or with messaging, it's not gonna work. This is not gonna work if you pick the other webs, uh, different um, options. Make sure to click on checkout with Facebook and have the turn on shop pay by Shopify just in case if you ever wanna connect a Shopify page to your Facebook shop because that's also something that you can do. All right, I'm gonna click on next. They're gonna ask you for your business name. So I'm gonna go with your home improvement shop because hey, that's what we decided on. And for the business email, make sure to put an email address that you you know check constantly because that's where you're gonna get your orders uh, to and information sent out uh, about your Facebook shop e-commerce account going on. So make sure to put an email address that you actually are using. Next, they're gonna ask you to create a catalog. What the catalog is, is basically your inventory. So, you know, name it something that you, you remember. I usually just name it inventory because it's easy for me to kind of know what the catalog is. And then click on that you are agreed to their terms and policies. All right, so once you convert your page to a Facebook shop, you're gonna go to this menu right here. This is your main dashboard. This is where you manage your Facebook shop, okay? This is where you add products, track orders, inventory, and stuff like that. Check this out, like it's, this is a little bit more advanced than regular Facebook Marketplace, because look at these, these tab, like you have all these different settings, you can go to insights, you can see your performance, stuff like that, you can track everything by days. Uh, when you go to orders, everything is like kinda nicely laid out. It's just really cool and easy to manage that way. It's, it's just, uh, Facebook Marketplace point 2.0, okay? It's it's just better, 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 better. Uh, now, what you wanna do is, as the first thing, is to check if you have a Facebook Marketplace option enabled and click on enable button just to have this run, okay? Where do you go to check this? Go to settings right here, and then you're gonna click on business assets and you're gonna be transported to page that looks like this, okay? Now, you're gonna, you wanna go to sales channels, go to Facebook and go to this, uh, this section right here where it says marketplace. If you have a green light, that's a good sign. That means that you're good to go. And right here, if you're able to click on the button that says enable, mine, mine says disconnect because I have a, have a Facebook uh, Marketplace enable on this page, but if you do it for the first time, you're just gonna say enable. If you are able to click it and it's gonna turn green, you, you're done. You Congratulations, your Facebook shop is created. You're good to go, you don't have to do anything else. But if it's yellow or red, or it just doesn't allow you to click on the enable button, that means that your page is not verified by Facebook yet and they need to season your page. You need to see your page. That's why you need those likes, etc. Again, it's a little bit more science to it, but in general, 
it all comes down to trustworthiness. How trustworthy is your page? That's, that's kind of the science to it. So if you don't have that option, maybe start, you know, setting on regular marketplace and wait in the meantime to have your shop enabled or, you know, just wait in general, you know, go watch a good show. There's a new Game of Thrones show, go watch it. Maybe by the time you finish the show, your option is going to be enabled, etc. And so since we are already here, I want to show you something else about Facebook shops, okay? So you can see there are different sales channels. There is a uh, Facebook, there's Instagram. So again, you can connect your Instagram page to it and you can sell on Instagram marketplace. Again, that's another level, but that's you, you can do that if you want. You can broaden up your audiences and sell to people on Instagram, which by the way, there's way more people on Instagram at this point than on Facebook probably. So it's just another cool way to kind of broaden up your audience. Um, there's a little bit more nuances which pages are allowed to sell on their Instagram. It's it's even more complicated than Facebook shops. We go over this in, in the guild, but it's possible. You can do it. It's It comes down again to the trustworthiness and how respectful is your page, etc. How established it is. And then also you can run ads, but you know we don't want to spend money on ads. We're using free ways of getting traffic to have people buy our products because we don't want to spend money on ads. It's possible to spend money on ads and very often it helps, but you don't have to, okay? Now, you got your shop ready to go. What you want to do now is probably add some products and wait for sales, right? That's that's the main goal here. So what you want to do is to add new products. There, there, is a, there are a few ways to do it, okay? One is by simply adding products just like on your regular marketplace. You singly upload one product and you're good to go, okay? That's one way of doing it. Another way is by using something called data feed. So data feed is basically, it's an Excel spreadsheet or a Google sheet that you can attach to the um, to your shop. And whenever you make changes on the data feed, they will automatically be reflected on your shop. Really cool stuff. It, that, that way it allows to a lot of automation. And speaking of automation, the third way is by using software such as AutoDS or FBM Fox, which specialize in dropshipping on Facebook Marketplace and Facebook Shops. And if you use these softwares, that's another level that's it just makes your life way, way easier. So there are different ways of doing it. In this video, I'm going to show you the three ways, which is the single upload and the uh, data feed upload by using Google Sheets. Okay, I'm gonna show you both ways. Again, I'm gonna drop the video about automation using the AutoDS next week, I believe so. It should be out next week. So we're gonna go over automation over there, but let me show you the three ways in this video, okay? So to add a product, what you wanna do is you wanna go to catalog and then click on items and then click on add items. And when you click on it, it's gonna ask you, are you trying to add one particular item or multiple items? We're gonna go with the one item and then I'm gonna show you how to do the multiple items, okay? So we'll add one item. And this is kind of similar to what we did with regular Facebook Marketplace, but also slightly different, okay? So the biggest difference between uploading images to a Facebook shop and Facebook Marketplace is that first you have to upload your main image first and then you can add the additional pictures. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna click on choose files on your device and pick my main image. And this is gonna be the main image on my Facebook shop, okay? Now, if I wanna add more uh, pictures, I have to click on advanced and then this is gonna open the menu to give me upload more pictures. So I'm gonna click on add items and I have to add them one by one, which is kind of annoying if you are not using any software to do that. Also, make sure that your picture is big enough because I just got a message that my picture was too small. There's them being why they want them big enough because again, they advertise these products, not just on Facebook Marketplace, but also on Instagram and other platforms. That's why they want to have unified size image, which is at least 500 by 500 pixels, okay? Here's the title. So we're gonna do the same thing that we did with a Facebook Marketplace listing that we created earlier. We're gonna copy the title from Walmart and the same thing with the description. So this is the listing on the Walmart website. I'm gonna copy the title. 
go back, paste it, description, we're gonna get the main features, paste it right here, we're gonna make it a little bit nicer by spacing it out, all right, and what it says website to link, ignore that, that doesn't matter, what it says price, I remember we priced it 116, right, that was our selling point, the thing with Facebook shops is that most products don't have a, sh uh, sorry, they don't have a fees right now, at least until the end of 2022, really cool stuff, so that means if I sell something for 116 dollars, I do get $116, okay? Facebook is not getting any fees from it. Really cool stuff. What is this condition? We're gonna go with new, brand, leave it empty, don't put anything. Content ID, leave it empty, don't do anything. Facebook product category, technically you have to pick the category, but the thing with shops is that they automatically uh, add the category themselves. So if you don't wanna do it, you don't have to, if you want to go and find it, you can click on it and type in dresser. Let's see if we can find it. Here we go. So uh, I'm going to go dresser, chest, and drawers under furniture, bedroom, furniture, okay? But again, you can leave it blank. Facebook shop will automatically find the category also because it's just more advanced and they are capable of doing it, okay? Then click on next. If it's gonna ask you for a website link, just like it, it's giving me a message right now, what I usually do is I just type in facebook.com and click on next, okay? Now, display options, you wanna show that this item is active, meaning it's ready to be sold and that it's in stock, all right? Go ahead and click next. When it says length, width, depth, height, it's really good if you actually upload this information because it allows Facebook to um, advertise your product better. It, with the more accurate is the more information you put, it's just better for the Facebook algorithm. But for our sake, I'm just going to do it because I want to continue and move forward. Okay. What it says assembly required, uh, I'm going to leave it blank because I'm not sure, but it probably, yeah, you, you probably need to assemble yourself. All of these stuff are optional, but the more information you fill out about the product, the better, okay? Now it's asking about the variants. I don't wanna deal with variants, there's no variants. This is the only variant they get, it's just one, so I'm gonna click on finish. And voila, my product is added to this Facebook shop. It's available, people can browse it. If they will look on Facebook Marketplace, they will probably see my listing, okay? That was one way of adding products. Another way is by using something called data feed that I mentioned earlier, which again is just like a spreadsheet with the list of your inventory, right? So to use data feed, you're gonna go where it says add items and click on add multiple items. And right here, it's gonna give you three options, manual, which is the way we just did, data feed, which is the way that I talk about in a second, and Pixel by using Facebook Pixel from another website such as Shopify. We don't have Shopify connected to this, so we're gonna go with the data feed and click on next. What it says, are you ready to upload your spreadsheet or file? Go with no, I need the feed template because you do need the template in order for this to work and click on download. Now Facebook is gonna generate the template for you that you can use. So I'm gonna click on build template and go with standard template and click on download template, okay? All right, so now Facebook has auto-generated template that I can use for myself to upload products, okay? And if I click on it, this is what that, this is what the template looks like, okay? Now I'm gonna upload this template to my Google Sheets account and I will be able to manage it from there. So this is my Google Sheet account. I'm gonna click on blank and I'm gonna upload the template that I just downloaded by going to file and then open, click on upload and click on browse. And I'm gonna upload the template that Facebook just gave it to me. And voila, my template is uploaded, okay? And this can get a little bit confusing for some, pri for some people just because this is not very laid out very easily, okay? So what this is, is basically, this is your inventory. 
and each line okay so like this one line for example is one product and this is actually not even a real product this is just a sample product that facebook auto generated for this particular template just so it kind of gives you an idea what is what okay so uh what it says price this is where you would price for that particular product what it says link there will be a link to the facebook listing but in our case it doesn't exist yet because we don't have it uh what it says quantity to sell that's where you put the quantity that you want to sell it for so i mean how many uh, products you have so i usually just put five okay uh sales price so if, if you're running a sale that will be the price you want to sell etc there's a bunch of different categories okay it can get kind of hectic with it what i usually do i just use software to kind of simplify this process because they generate this data feed for you and it doesn't look as messy as this and again i'm gonna make another video about using software next week but i want you to understand what the data feed is and how you can use it so you understand how these information is being imported here once you will start using a software but anyway let's assume that i want to use this data feed and i'm gonna to track my inventory and my listings on facebook marketplace okay i'm gonna click on uh sorry i'm gonna go back to items click on add items and multiply items data feed next and now what it says are you ready to update your and now what it says are you ready to update your, your file i'm gonna say yes i don't need a template anymore because i just downloaded it from facebook and click on next now they don't want to ask me for my uh file so i can either upload that spreadsheet that i just downloaded from facebook but i'm not gonna do that i'm gonna go to use google sheet and get the google sheet link when you do that make sure to click on share and change from restricted to share with anyone and this will generate the link that you can use for um you know having facebook marketplace access to it so i'm gonna click on uh copy link and then click on done and go back to facebook paste the link click on next now it's asking me how often do you want to update my data feed i'm gonna go with hourly and click on next and this is just the preview I'm gonna click on save feed and upload. And right now Facebook is uh, trying to connect my data feed to Facebook. So now whenever I make some changes right here in this data feed, they're gonna be reflected on my Facebook shop. That's how the data feed works. So this is my inventory that looks kind of nasty because there's nothing here, but whatever changes I make here, they're going to be reflected in my inventory right here. So if I want to add product, I will go here and I will fill out all this information here. Like, like the price, for example, it's $50. Um, brand, I would put, you know, whatever I want. The quantity is five items, etc. Description, this is the description. So I would put the description right here. This is a little bit more complicated. And again, it's easier when you use software. But if you're starting out on Facebook shop, you can just start by adding simple sing single item just like i showed you before or using software which i'm gonna go over next week and this my friend would be all the basic information you need to know in order to start dropshipping on the facebook marketplace again if you're waiting for your facebook shop to get approved or enabled you can start selling on facebook marketplace if you're waiting for the option the shipping option to be enabled on your uh, regular facebook marketplace try you know having your family or friends message you on the listings that you post locally and fake the transactions in order to have the shipping option unlocked faster at the moment it seems like facebook marketplace is favoring people selling on regular facebook marketplace but these things changes few months ago that was not the case few months ago if you had a facebook shop they were winning and i'm sure in the future it's gonna go back to it because it seems like facebook is focusing on facebook shops more but again right now facebook marketplace is winning and in the future it's gonna be facebook shop that it's winning it's always changing that's why you probably want to have both just in case one or another is getting more sales or views the the key thing about this game if you want to make like serious money is to scale up by having more shops and more accounts that's the true key of this Facebook Marketplace dropshipping game. More listings, more accounts, more shops, etc. Start with one. Don't overwhelm yourself. Start with one. Put love and effort to actually build it, create it. Learn yourself. Teach yourself how to, you know, do all of that. 
and you should be good to go, my friend. If you want more insights into Facebook dropshipping, I strongly suggest joining our dropshipping guild. Again, it's not just the course, okay? It's actually a community, it's access to me. It's the weekly meetings. It's something new that you learn every week. I learn a lot from these meetings myself and I am, you know, someone who has been doing this for a while. We have a different level of uh, dropshippers over there. Some of them are really advanced, some of them are beginners. Maybe you're the beginner and you want to be surrounded by other more like-minded individuals that actually want to do this and they, it's the way they want to make money online and you want to learn from them or maybe, you know, you have something that you can share with, with them. Maybe your new perspective of someone's doing it for the first time can be beneficial to others. I make sure that everyone is welcome and every question is welcome over there. And I believe that over the year, because I've been doing this for a year, it created a very well minded and friendly community that's, you know, focused on one thing, which is making money through dropshipping. And that's another thing I want to mention. We do talk about Facebook dropshipping over there, but that's not the only dropshipping we do. I also dropped from on eBay, now also started Mercari, basically any marketplace that I can put my fingers into it, I kind of jump on it and that's what we talk about over there as well. So you get more in-depth insights into Facebook dropshipping and also access to people that are doing this full-time or are trying to learn something new, really cool stuff. If you decide to join us, Again, use coupon FACEBOOK30 to get 30% off. It's only for people that are watching this video. So make sure you use this discount. Next week, I'm gonna make a video about automation of Facebook Marketplace. I'm gonna show you softwares that you can use in order to kind of streamline this process and make it more easy. I have also a Facebook group that anyone can join. People ask their questions about any issues they're facing. It's a moderated group, so we make sure that there is no spam or anything hateful or anything like that. Only questions dedicated to dropshipping. So if you have a question, feel free to join the group and ask it. Maybe I'll answer, maybe someone else from the group will answer. And don't forget to like and subscribe this video if you know found this vi video valuable. I hope you know you know enough to start Facebook dropshipping. I'm telling you, it's for something very easy and you should try it. If you can try it, why not? This is probably one of the easiest side hustles that you can start doing. It's it's really easy. And it's actually something that works. Because there's affiliate marketing, there's Shopify dropshipping, there's other stuff. Look. I'm not saying that you cannot make money with these things, but it's just harder than Facebook dropshipping. I think Facebook dropshipping is the easiest one to start. Maybe, you know, that's gonna be your first one and then you can move on to the next one because with Shopify dropshipping, you're gonna need some money in order to start. Maybe start with Facebook because you don't really need money to start it or maybe you just need a very little money and then use the profits from your Facebook dropshipping to start Shopify dropshipping where you have to spend money on ads. Just saying, just an idea. But that will be it for today. I know that uh, you are waiting for another two videos. So if you want to pick one of those, go ahead and pick ones. I'm sure some of these videos are really good, but I'll see you in the next one. Hopefully we'll come back next week to see the one about the automation. See you later. I'm out. Peace.